She hadn't been, had a nap all day. Say what? <laughs> oh goodness. Yep, she is. She is. She she is sleepy. She is she just gonna wear us down today. She gonna wear us down. That's all there's to it. Okay, good evening, good evening, good evening. It's so good to see everybody this afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the Living Bread Church of Grace and Hope for our Tuesday Bible study. Amen. And this is exciting. When I posted, I said, do you have questions about your communion? And if so, you need to join us tonight. I'm sure nobody would be taking part of that, but it's okay. <laughs> To God be the glory. We'll be studying and coming from Precepts for Living, the uh, UMI study, the Bible in One Year, the Bible in One Year. And it has been an awesome study for us so far. We're now, we, we studied the New Old Testament and now we're in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. And, and tonight we're on Luke the Lord's Supper. Let us have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to study your word, the, your supper, Lord, the Lord's Supper, help us, Lord, to get whatever we need from this lesson that we didn't have and help us, Lord, to understand why it is important, why it's important that we commune with each other by taking your supper. And you said to do it Anytime we do it, to do it in remembrance of you. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everyone who's participating tonight. And, Lord, we just ask, as I always ask, will the Holy Spirit come and teach this lesson for us? This we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Our lesson is coming from Luke. The Lord's Supper is our subject. Our focal verses is Luke 22nd chapter, verses 7 through 23. Our aim for change is by the end of the lesson, we will explore the principles behind the Lord's Supper. We're going to commit to participate in the Lord's Supper as Jesus would have believers do. And we're going to feel motivated to teach someone else about the importance of the Lord's Supper. Our in focus, Gary is on with us this evening. Amen. Okay, Gary, you got it. Okay. Everyone is here. 
region of, of uh, special people who have made a long, a long impact on our lives. We wanted to demonstrate how much we love and appreciate them. And one of the way of one of the way to do that is that is with the fellowship meal to honor them. In this day's lesson, we learned there is something wonderful about sharing a meal together. In fact, in many countries, the, the dinner table is significant with brotherly love and fellowship. Amen. 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 The dinner table is synonymous with brotherly love and fellowship. The dinner table. Do you remember? Long years ago, when there was a certain time for dinner and everybody was expected to be in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody remember that? Nobody don't remember that? Nobody didn't have that? No, we didn't have that. <laughs> oh, wow. Sundays, I know Sundays, everybody have dinner together. Oh wow. Everybody. Oh, holidays, of course. Holidays, yes, yes, yes. At our at our house <laughs> growing up, it was every evening right around news time right around news time is oh. when my mom had everybody eating dinner between 5 30 and 6 o'clock that's when we had dinner that's when it was ready for everybody to eat And not that we sat around the table and talked. No, we didn't do that. Everybody just went on and got their plate and ate and was looking around to see, was it any more left to get seconds? <laughs> That's... Was at the table. Oh, at the table. You ain't gonna go home and eat today, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, to God be the glory. But we have, but we have special times that that we bring people together to have uh, dinners for them, to honor them, their birthdays, uh, because they did something outstanding in the community, because they uh, did something and was special in the neighborhood is all we, we can always find a way to bring people together to honor people and yeah. do it with a meal to do it with a meal we yeah. can we can always do that, do that. yes I'll, I'll, I'll always always do that yeah. i can i can rem i remember the first birthday party that uh i knew i i didn't know i thought when people gave birthday parties that whoever was Given the party, took care of everything, and then one day, this girl gave her mother a birthday party and yeah. called everybody and told them to bring a covered dish. <laughs> and I said, yeah. wow, <laughs> that was awesome. She had everybody to bring a covered dish. It wasn't even at her house. It was in the church fellowship hall, and she told everybody to bring a covered dish. And people did. And people did, you know, so we do, we do honor people. We do honor. So tonight we're going to talk about the Lord's Supper. We're going to talk about the Lord's Supper and how that supper is special, is special for Jesus and how he instituted that to be special for him, for him. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. Let me give a shout out to our Facebook uh, family, Sister Laurette, who is on both Facebook and, and the phone. Amen. Amen. And Amen. Sister Marjorie Spearman in Wilmington, Amen, is joining us. Sister Margot Hill, Amen, she's Amen. joining us. Amen from Virginia. Amen. Uh, Barry and and uh, Robin Jordan, Amen, is joining us from Virginia. Amen. And and, Amen. and Sister Constance Amen. Grady and Brother Ira Grady, better known as Peggy and Leon, is joining us out of Jacksonville, Amen. North Carolina. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Our keep in mind verse. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Amen. To God be the glory. And in our people's places and times, we it talks about the Lord's Supper. It talks about the Lord's Supper. It also talks about it, how Jesus uh, said he was the bread of life. How he said he was the bread of life. And, and that's where he gave me the name. God gave me the name for our church, the living bread. Because Jesus is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. Amen. Yes. Yes. Okay. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And our background, our background is coming from, is talking about what is leading to this special meal. Our background is talking about what is leading to it. And we all know that this, that the Lord's Supper started during the Passover. It was the Passover during that time. It was the Passover. And, and Jesus found it, he, he found it just inspirational, I would say, uh, that's the word I'm using, that he found it inspirational to have dinner the, with, the, with the Passover meal with his disciples, with his disciples. To be with them. To God be the glory. So we're so we're we're excited. We're excited about it. We're excited, and I don't want to get into it because we need to read it. And anybody got any questions? If any, if there are any questions that anybody have, be it Facebook, be it uh, by the conference line, if you have any questions, and I also like to welcome. Gary and Marilyn on our conference line. And if it's anybody else, we'd like to welcome you too. Amen. Um, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna go ahead and get it go ahead and get started because this lesson is not a lesson that we're not familiar with. It's something that we do in our churches every month. Every month. Every month. Every and month. on special mm. occasions, mm. we do the Lord's Supper. Yes. Amen. So, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, Luke, 22nd chapter. We're going to start with verses 7 through 13, if someone will read. And then Jesus' disciples prepare for the Passover. of unleavened bread arrives when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him at the house he enters. Say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? How will you take? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. 
disciples. What do we need to do to prepare our place for the Lord's coming? Maybe we need to sweep away some bad habits. Or sacrifice our fleshly craving. Or cleanse our minds from the world's pollution. Whatever it is, now would be the time to purge ourselves from dead works so that we can welcome the Lord to fellowship with us. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Is it anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions before I say anything? Come on now, because I don't want this to be just all about me talking. Anybody got any questions? No, but I, I, I did look into it a little bit about how Jesus knew that there was going to be a man, a uh, uh, man there carrying the picture, uh, because the men normally carry water. It's not that they do not carry water. They do carry water, but they normally carry the water in sacks or a sack of bags. Yeah, sacks of bags. So... By him, by him, by them carrying, by the men having pictures, uh, that's why it was so easy for them to be, for them to find the man so easily, because normally it's only women that do, you know, carry the water and pictures. Yeah. I didn't know why they were emphasizing that so much, so I looked it up a little bit. Okay. And anybody else? And anybody else? That now to me. That was neither here nor there. <laughs> now that's to me. That's to me. Okay. That was that. That's to me. Yeah, just, that's just like they have, they put an emphasis on the fact of um, how did the how did that man know that they were going to come to him, and how did he know to have the room prepared? You know, and then they turn right around and answer their own questions in the explanation. Jesus is, God is omnipresent. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm quite sure that he had, had something that had already come to him that this was going to take place. He just didn't know where. Exactly. That's just, that's just <laughs> like at night when we're asleep. And God put a dream in our spirit, you know, and and then uh -huh. something happened, and you say, you know what, I I had a dream about that. I I I, I yeah. dreamed that okay. this would happen. Uh -huh. You know, God has His way of doing things. He has His way, and, and when you yeah. know and understand that God is everywhere. In every conversation, <laughs> he's listening, and and it, it it puts you in awe. God, you know, we're talking about the world. We're talking about billions of people, and He knows what's being said in every language at the time is said. He knows. And also, there's, yeah, and also there was that question there uh, that when, while I was reading when, when one, someone says, well, how would he know this? And it's just so funny. God has those unlimited, unlimited powers. As you said, Pastor, God is aware of everything before it even happens. Before it happens. Before it even happens. And you know. He's already aware. And, and you know, and I think with our walk with, with him, our walk with God, our walk with Jesus in faith, it takes us all these years to find out and even longer because the older we become, the more we are in awe with just his presence and the things that he does. Amen. That is so true. <clears throat> so true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
you know. The closer we get, the more we realize, we realize how much we need them I, in our lives. Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yes, and it 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 just totally it's just totally amazing when I was reading that, and I'm I'm like, really was that was that important? I mean, how important is that? God God is everywhere. Why would I why would I wonder how that man knew what they wanted when he was carrying that picture, and and he already had the room ready as far as the upper room already probably had it reserved. <laughs> You know. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> can be in more one place at one time. Oh my the only one. Right. He's the only one that can be in more than one place. He's well, it well, says he's well, omnipresent. Well, you see, if he was you, he probably went right there to the man and told him we're gonna have this tonight up here. <laughs> goodness oh my goodness and then and then john and peter they go and 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 they start preparing they start preparing because as far as they were concerned it was going to be a passover meal it was going to be a meal and and they had a meal but i but i don't think they were expecting him to do and they were not expecting him to do what he did with the new with the new covenant being his blood right. and and his his communion with them they wasn't expecting that they wasn't expecting that and then things are to be done in an order so they wasn't even expecting it because of the order it was done in when he did it right. Right. they wasn't even expecting it so no i'm done go ahead Go ahead. So, are you saying that they had a are you saying that they had a complete meal? Then they had the Passover meal, or, or was the Passover meal the meal? The Passover meal was the meal. Okay. The pa that, yeah, right. they they went and had the lamb killed in in reference to the lamb uh, that was done uh, in uh, Egypt. Doing the before the Exodus, when they put the blood across the, uh, the doorpost, that was they. That was one of the. That was one of the things they had to have in the meal was that lamb, in the Passover meal. That was the Passover. The Passover. So they so they went and had it prepared, had the lamb prepared, and I'm sure there was other parts of the meal that was prepared as well. You know. Uh, Probably some oh, vegetables. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some baked macaroni. No. 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 I don't even think we. I don't even think we had no macaroni. We we didn't have no macaroni when we went in. We had no macaroni and cheese, did we? Because um, he just said that when he just said that's what he said. The disciples didn't understand. He said he's gonna eat this last meal. And he said, Master, where you going? <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> you know. That's right. They didn't know he was gonna get he didn't know he was gonna die. No, he knew. But he was dying. He was trying to tell him. But he knew. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus knew, but the disciples didn't know. The disciples didn't know. Right, right, right. The man went to Jerusalem to die. He messed up the other way. He said, the king is dying, no place to fuck you, Ruben. My Lord, my Lord. We're going to say hello and good evening to, amen, my sister-in-law, Rosa, amen, in Bolivia. Amen. Yushame out of amen. out of Maryland has gotten on. Elder James Jordan, amen, is with us this evening. Amen. Yes. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. They've joined us this evening. Okay. So when oh. we uh when we started when we when I started reading this book a few weeks ago, I said, Well, they, this book is a little bit off to have all this stuff after we already did Easter. But the calendar changes, so Passover is really this week right here that we're doing. 
And you know, I don't know if y'all yeah. pay attention to the news yet. Passover just started Monday. And it runs until the 30th. So yeah. this is the real, real week. Our calendar is kind of messed up with theirs. But, yeah. 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 yeah, Passover is this week. Our And this book is with it. But our our Easter stuff, we already done Passover and everything. Yep. Right. And that's because we're on the Roman calendar. Mm-hmm. We're, we're on the Roman calendar. So that's that's one reason we're on the Roman calendar. And, you know, <laughs> I, I tell you, it blew me away with Easter being in, on the fifth Sunday. It totally got me off guard. Usually it's like the second the second Sunday in April or the, the first Sunday of April, but I wasn't looking for the fifth Sunday. Do you think it was because it's leap year? No, it go by the moon. Probably. Uh, well, no, because I don't, I don't think the Hebrews go by the leap year. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. I don't, they, it's on the calendar because we all go use the Roman calendar for dates, but um, the Hebrew calendar, it does, as JJ say, it goes by the moon. Their, theirs go by the moon. They're, they, they're, they're, with what, with what, not that they worship the moon now. Not that they worship the moon, but they do their dates according to the moon. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to verses 14 through 20. Jesus and his disciples eat the Passover meal. Go ahead. When, when the time when came, the time came okay. Jesus and, and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus Amen. said, I have been very eager to eat the Passover meal with you before my suffering began. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Jesus and his disciples with the Passover meal. Scripture doesn't indicate how long it took to prepare the Passover meal, but after Peter and John had completed their task, Jesus and the rest of the disciples arrived. Everything was set for the master and his followers to share his best time with one another. Jesus would use this meal not only to teach his disciples how to truth, but also to share his most intimate feelings with them. As he sat with them at the table feasting and sharing, Jesus called their attention to the moment at hand. First, he let the disciples know how much he desired to share the Passover with them before his death on the cross. The word desire refers to an intense longing that yearns to be fulfilled. For three years, Jesus had poured his very life into the, these men. The disciples were more than his students. Jesus considered them friends. Jesus also knew that after this particular night, he would not see them again. Jesus was going back to the Father, and the next time he and his disciples would share the Passover together would be in his Father's kingdom. Jesus' death was the means by which the new covenant would be established. Thus, 
Jesus was pointing the disciples to the time when they would be reunited with him in the millennial kingdom. John calls this reunion the marriage supper of the Lamb, where believers of all races and social standards will come together with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to celebrate the victory that was secured for us through the cross and Jesus' resurrection. The disciples still did not understand the significance of this Passover, but Jesus had their attention, and he continued teaching, using the cup and bread as object lessons that pointed to himself as the Lamb of God. First giving thanks to the Father, Jesus took the cup and passed it to the disciples. He wanted them to share the cup and the symbols that together they would be cleansed and redeemed by his blood. Jesus knew that once he was arrested and taken to, pa- to Pilate, his physical life, of, his physical life would come to an end. But the disciples were assured that Jesus, that just as they now drank together from the cup, so they would drink again in the Father's eternal kingdom. Jesus also broke the bread into pieces and passed it around to the disciples and urged them to eat it and to drink from the cup after the meal. The bread and the cup represented Jesus' body that would be broken on the cross and the blood he was shed. His death was not only for his disciples, but for all who would believe in him. We have access to the Father because of Jesus. The scripture tells us that there is not only one mediator between God and us, and that is Christ Jesus. And while an animal sacrifice is necessary in the old Jesus is the sacrifice God accepts in the new. His body and blood which were broken and shed at the cross are the means by which all who believe in him shall be saved. Today when the believers partake of the communion element, we are acknowledging that Jesus' death is sufficient for our salvation. That is why Jesus says that when we eat the bread and drink the cup, we must do so in remembrance of him. Amen. 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 When we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. In remembrance of him. Uh, some churches chooses to do it on. Say what, Gary? What's that? What were you saying? Oh, okay. Uh, some churches chooses to do it on the first Sunday. Amen. Every first Sunday of the month. To have communion because he said to do it in remembrance of him. My home church that I came out of only do it every three months. They do it every quarter. Every three months is when they have communion. Uh, and that was and that was with when I came out of that church, it was the Free Will Baptist. It was Free Will Baptist. And that's when they do it every quarter. And when they have their convocation, their their convocation of all the free will churches coming together and they do a communion. But uh, he said, for as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. If you, I, I was looking at uh, Kenneth Copeland. I was looking at his uh, ministries one time and his daughter uh, was doing, was, was doing the, uh, the homily for that for that morning that I looked at it, and she said that her husband, her fa- her uh, her children, they do it every Friday. Every Friday, they do it because at home they do communion at home. I know that we do it as a, as a sign of a church sacrament. A religious sacrament, you know, that's what we do it as, as a religious sacrament. 
But when I un when when I looked at her and 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 understood what she was saying, she said it keeps them for the week to come, and it keeps them for the end of the week. Okay. okay. Going into the end of the week, yeah, she. Okay. That's why they do it, and she and and we feel like in order to do it, it has to be administered by. A pastor, amen. Uh, uh -huh. has to be administered by a pastor. Uh, I know in the AME church, it can be administered by locals, but there are certain things that locals can't read in the communion, the holy communion, uh, services. Um, and in some churches, they don't read anything, they just pray over it. Yeah. And take it. Okay. You want a job? I have, okay. Is that biblical that it must be administered by a pastor? I haven't found anywhere in it where it's biblical for it to be administered by a pastor. No. I haven't. Okay. Because the reason why, yeah, because I kind of like, I do it every first on my own. I did. See, uh, I'm saying, maybe I'm doing something wrong. No, you're not. Be because because he said to do it in remembrance of him for as often as you do it. For as often as you do it. I And see, and that, and that's why every first Sunday I ask anybody on Facebook that's looking or whatever. Listen, this is our first Sunday. We're doing communion, and if you if you know you're not going to go to church that Sunday when it's your communion time, go go get because every because what you using is symbolic anyway. It's symbolic. The bread. And whatever you're drinking. Yes. And I always say, whatever you choose to drink is symbolic. Right. As as long as you pray over it and ask and ask God and, and tell God what you know what you're doing it for. Because it also tells us that when you do do communion, if you got anything against anybody. Before you even take communion, you should think about it and go get this everything straight. Yes, well, right, right, exactly. It's happening. It's happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, see, where did the consecration come from? That came from a that came from the church. <laughs> that 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 came from a church saying it for them it is a holy sacrament. It's a holy sacrament. All you, when you're taking it, when you're taking it, what what you're doing is praying over it. You can pray over it yourself. And I feel that strongly. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying it. I feel it very strongly. I feel it very strongly. You know, that when you're, when you're, when you're at home, when you're, when you're by yourself, like she couldn't get out to come get it. She couldn't, you know, uh, some of our elderly people can't get out, but then we go and serve them at home. Our sick and our shut in, we go serve them. You know, but between you and God, when I saw Kenneth Copeland's daughter, when she said, we take communion, my family, every Friday, every Friday, we offer, we, we take communion. Before the Lord. And I'm like wow. Wow. Look at that. And then I went to search it. And I haven't found anywhere. Anywhere where it can't be done. I haven't found it. Okay. 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 I haven't found it. So. He did it with his disciples. He instituted it. I ain't seen anywhere where he said that it's got to be consecrated before you take it. I haven't seen that. But right. it's according to what religion you come under. Okay. It's according to what we... In, in, in our church, in that one I grew up in, all the pastor did was pray over it. That's pray right. over it. And then he would just, he would repeat what Jesus said. This is my body, broken for you. That's right. That's right, because I would read the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Well, you know the AME is, is, is different than everything. Yeah, well, it's, it's not just the AME. I think the, um, the Catholic, well, you know, they all drink from the same cup. Now, COVID, they might have changed. But I've been in the Catholic service that did communion. Presbyterians that did communion. They drank from the same cup. <laughs> oh, wow. That's another question. I'm glad you brought that up. I think while I was reading, I said to myself, are they drinking from the same cup? Or does all the disciples have their own cup? What, what, I'm what? Glad you brought that up. I, what what did he do? He told him to he, go ahead, go ahead, Marilyn. They, he, they, he it and he passed it around. He, and they all drank from the same he, cup. He passed it around and they drank from the same cup. That's what I thought. Oh, I caught that too, and the lesson. I didn't bring that up. I just thought of it when you said it. You know, but, but, but look, but look at how we say we trust God. Do we really trust God? If his communion is holy, if what we're doing is holy, if what we're doing together is holy, when we assemble ourselves together, if it's holy, do you think God would do anything to harm us? Got to bring that food out. You don't know what that 
Exactly. And you know, I was reading, I was, I was reading the other day, I was reading the other day that anytime anybody has to question what should not and should happen in God's house, as far as people are concerned, uh, be leery of that person. The first thing is, do that person know God? Do they really know God? Are they really saved? You know, are they really saved? Because if you if you trust if you trust God, if you trust Him, if you trust Him, when you when you're there doing communion, apparently Catholics must trust Him because they was drinking out the same cup. <laughs> they was drinking that. They was passing that same cup. In the Catholic Church. I've been in them. I know. I ain't talking about what somebody told me. I don't know what they do now since COVID. Now they dip it. They dip the wafer and put it on the mouth. <laughs> they do what, JJ? They dip the wafer in the cup and put it on the mouth. And, and put it in their mouth. JJ say they dip the wafer in the cup and then they put it and then they eat it. But they do it from the same cup. Yeah, I see that on TV. Yeah. I see on a TV show or something I'm watching in the Catholic yeah. Church. Yeah, and you see, and you see, they're still holding to that principle of that one cup. Yeah, right. That's what you're saying, right, right, right. Let me let me see. Is anybody got? I I ain't got nobody saying nothing on here. They might be cooking dinner or eating their dinner. Anyway, I'm talking about on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it but but that that's why I put it out there that if anybody saw that and wanted to get on there anything that anybody wanted to say the holy communion is precious it's precious it's 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 precious it's just it God said as often as you do it do it in remembrance of me In the right order. And doing it from your heart. The right order. Oh my God. Yes. Doing it from your heart. He makes everything. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He makes everything possible for us. Everything. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Because when that happened to me that Sunday at, at church, when that happened to me, I when I got home, I had I left out of the pulpit because I was I backed up, and, and I don't even know if anybody realized why I did that. You know, I just backed right on up, backed right on out, and 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 got in my car, changed, changed got out of my that robe and everything, and went to the bathroom and tried to clean myself up and, and got on home. And I called Reverend Watson, and I told him what happened. And he said, you did the right thing. Well, I know I had to do the right thing because I know I would have been a mess going up there. But then I read in the Bible because that month was my issue of blood. And I didn't have any business serving. None. I didn't have any business serving. That's the woman had the issue of blood. That's right. That was my issue of blood that month. So I didn't have any business serving anybody. Didn't have any business serving. Say what? She said there's a question. Marjorie Chairman has a question. Okay. Is this why we ask God to bless our food? Yes. Yes. We ask God to bless our food. And if you're saying it repetitiously, because every time you sit down, remember to say grace. Every time you sit down, like just saying grace, and it's not coming from your heart, and you not you just doing it because it's repetitious. You know, everything that we do, when we start doing things repetitiously, you know, there is there is no impact on what we're doing. With with the Lord, because we're just doing. Oh, you just doing it because you supposed to. You ain't doing it because you care about me. 
You're not doing it cheerfully. You're not doing it with a loving heart. You don't even hear you. Exactly. I've learned now to say when I bless my food, when I say that I'm Lord, I ask you to bless this food for the nourishment of my body. And people laugh when I say, because you know, I don't need another pound. I mean that. All the impurities. So yes, when we when we bless our food, yes. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. See, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing what Lord have mercy. It's amazing. Hazel. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. If Jesus drank wine, why do you think you can't drink any? You can, but if you know that it's going to bother you mentally, if you feel like it, no, I can't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. But is it a sin? No. And we don't have no business telling people that it is a sin. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We we try to we try to we we try to figure out the big sins and the little sins. And 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 as far as God is concerned, sin is sin. What comes out of the body. That's what defiles things. What comes out. The words that you say to people that you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go to the last uh, two verses. Last three verses. 21 through 23. Go ahead. Synonymous.
Commemorates. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Every time. Every time we take it, we need to remember what he went through. And I feel that one of the reasons why that it, that he it's says crazy. that if you got anything it's against crazy. your brother, get it right we'll before get it you go was because we'll get it the night we'll get it. that he did it, we'll get it. We'll get the it. night that he did it, he knew that Judas was going to betray him. And he told them. Yeah. He told them. And, yeah. Judas, and Judas took communion right along with him. Judas took communion right along with him and then he told him to go. He told him to go. JJ said the scripture the scripture says 
The scripture says that after it happened, after that happened, My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. It says that Satan came into him. Satan came into, that's what the scripture says, that Satan came and took and took Judas over. Apple. You know, Apple. because, you know, the, the Bible is very clear that that there was a man that was, that was going to betray Jesus. The Bible is very clear about that. that it was prophesied. Okay. That was it, it was very clear okay. that I, Judas was born for that for what he did. For what he did. When Jesus even made him a disciple, he said he looked and said, uh not in not in this portion of the lesson, but it was in the uh the text. More light on the text. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was reading there where it said that. That Judas had a choice. He decided to do what he did. Maybe so. Maybe so. But I also know that God knew what he was there for. And it had to be done. He, it had to be done. Whether it was Judas or anybody else. It had to be done. Mama. <laughs> you know. They didn't take him back. He he wanted to give them back. I think he yeah, threw them.